today we are going to look at how to integrate Edit.js inside an Angular project. Let me quickly jump to Visual Studio Code and I will show you the package.json file which will list down all the dependencies that we have right now. So we have Angular version as 11 along with that. I have installed the dependency of Edit.js which is pointing to 2.25.0. Let me also show you an npm js page which will help us to identify whether this is the latest version. So you can see it over here. This is the latest version which was kind of published a month ago. Uh, quite an active project. Um, let's go ahead and see how we can implement this. You have already seen the dependency that has been added to the package.json. The next thing that we need to do is to create a component which will or be used as a placeholder for our editor js so i'll begin with ng generate component command and i will name this particular component as basic hyphen editor press enter and to generate our command or to generate our component any point of time all right so our component is ready let me just quickly expand that and I will switch to the basic editor component.html. Now, this is the default tag that gets generated. Let me remove that. So, the very first thing that we require is creating a placeholder inside which the editor chase will be able to render the editor. So, I'll start with the div tag and I will have a annotation called as editor. And I'm going to use this uh, and use the view child directive to refer to this particular element. So it's basic editor component.ts. This is the definition. This is a bare bones skeleton that we have. I'm going to add another lifecycle hook called as after view in it because this is the lifecycle method which you are going to use to initialize the editor.js component. Naturally, we need to create a definition for ng after view init method because that's a interface method defined inside uh, the after view init and as i said let me go ahead and create an reference of uh, the editor placeholder that we just created so we have the name of that annotation as editor and we want to read it as an element reference so element ref let's call it as a static true there is no ngf conditions so conditional display is not applied over there and that's why we can safely call this as static true let's go ahead and also give a name to this particular attribute i'm going to call it as an editor element let me remove that private so name of our variable is going to be editor element and it is of type element ref that looks good now inside this ng after view in it we are going to call another private function which will help us to initialize or set the basic properties for the editor chase so i'm going to call this particular method as initialize editor let's go ahead and quickly define that method so private initialize editor the type is going to be void there is nothing that we need to return now one thing which we need to notice is that the instance that we are going to create um need to be saved inside some variable so that we can later on refer to it and call certain methods on top of that so i'm going to create another private variable called as editor and the type of that is going to be editor js looks good let's initialize this so this dot editor is equal to now editor js comes with a constructor which helps us to set this property so i will call it as editor js and you can quickly see that there is a configuration that is expected let me set that okay so the first thing that we require is the holder argument which defines the parent element or it provides a reference of the parent element and as we know we already have editor element created now the type of that is actually element ref so we need to call a property called as native element which helps us to get the native html element 
and let's also set the minimum height for this particular uh, editor instance so i'm going to set it to 200 pixels let's go ahead and quickly check the html file let's go back to the component.ts there are no errors everything looks fine or uh, the editor.js has been default imported from the editor.js package let me just save that and we will try to compile this particular code so ng serve hyphen o looks great or uh, there are no compilation errors and as you can see there is a blank screen which is getting rendered the reason is that we didn't include this particular component inside our app component.html so i'll quickly switch over there and now we can see the app component.html which is completely blank i removed the existing content that comes along with the default skeleton project so since our component name is basic editor it is prefixed with app as a keyword you can see that selector over here so we are using that app hyphen basic hyphen editor it is there inside app component.html let's quickly check whether app model has a reference to the basic editor yes it is present let me save this particular content let's verify the terminal and looks good the project has been recompiled and if i just quickly go back to the chrome i still don't see anything but as soon as i hold over this top section you can see that there is a plus icon which is getting displayed i'll just click that and if i start typing you can see that the browser is allowing me to type something over here and the moment i press enter i can again see that plus symbol as well as there is an ellipsis icon which helps me to change the position of the block so i will type something over here this looks nice so we have a bare bone editor there is no default appearance available for that we can change that but for the time being let's keep it simple let's try to change the position of this particular block just to see whether it is working fine yes the basic functionality of the editor js is working fine you can see that there is an option to move up move down a specific block or you can even delete a particular block if i click on the plus sign this is the default plugin or the component that comes configured with the editor js i will create another video wherein i will show how you can add multiple options and even you can configure the basic settings which will indicate what options has to come on a specific plugin now if i just select any particular text you can see that there is basic formatting options available i can mark this particular text as bold italic or i can also create a link this looks very subtle uh, if i just type any url over here and press enter you can see that the link is getting rendered now this is very fantastic now there is one more functionality which we need to check about how do we refer to the content which is getting generated inside this editor js so if i will just go back to the editor js website you can see that the default home page shows us a demo of the editor js and just below that there is a json structure now this shows us uh, the actual data structure used by the editor js it is a block based implementation all the content which has seen just now they are available in the json format so now if you want this particular content to be serialized to the json because later on when you want to save it how do we do that so let's go ahead and quickly implement that as well so to do that i will add a button on the screen and first let me create a wrapper for that i will again have a div as an element inside that i'm going to create a button the type is going to be button and uh, we need to capture the click event let's put a label for this button as show and the method that we are going to call is called as show editor data let's go ahead and define this method inside our basic editor component.ts 
I'll just press enter over here and I will paste the name of our method inside this we need to refer to our instance so you can see it on the line 27 that we have created a class table variable which holds a reference to the editor JS. Now if you look at the properties of this particular instance you will not find something called as value or get value. So editor JS doesn't directly give us an option to get the serialized content rather it provides us a method called as save and if you carefully observe the return type, it is promised. Now, the reason is that editor JS is actually a very extensible editor. You can create your plugins, you can add those plugins and each plugin is able to detect how its content has to be saved. Now, some of those plugins might have a complex functionality and it might require making an API calls or doing some asynchronous operations. And hence, when the save operation is getting performed, there might be some delays. So to address that, Editor JS has given an option that each plugin can have a promise and then when a specific asynchronous operation gets completed, it can return those content. So that gives us a flexibility to call any API methods, call any asynchronous operations and then return the data. So it is very flexible. So we're going to call this particular save method and since it returns a promise, you can use the then method. You can also use async await. It purely depends upon the approach that you want to follow. Now our uh, method is returning some lint related violations. So I'll just quickly fix that. Now inside this then method, we need to uh, perform any operation. So in case you want to save the content, you can call an API and you can serialize this particular data, which is inside the data JS uh, to a database. So in our case, we're just going to quickly print it to a console. So console.dir and then I will pass this particular data argument. Let's quickly verify how our component looks like. So in HTML, we have this show button inside editor.basicEditorComponent.ts. We have the show editor data as a method, which is used as a click handler. It is calling the same method using the promise uh, it is getting a reference of the data and we are simply printing that data to the console looks good overall things are quite nice what i'll do is that i will try to place this particular button component on the center of the screen so let me quickly create one class and let's call that particular class as a container define that particular container class over here this is a css class so I'm going to use a flex layout because it's quite simple to align the contents using the flex layout. And since I want the content to be placed in the center of the screen, let's use the CSS property called as a justify content and assign a value as center. So I will just save all of these components. Let me quickly go back to the terminal and see what is happening. So looks good. Everything is getting saved. And it is compiled properly. Let's switch back to our editor JS demo. And you can see on the web page that the contents has been cleared. We have a show button over here. Let me quickly type something. We are going to test save method. I'll also press F12 and see what is uh, the situation on the console. Everything looks clean. We have a default message from the editor JS. Let me just clear the console so that we can see what is getting generated once we click on this show button. I click the show button and you can see that there is an object which is available. And if we expand this object, this is the default data structure. We have a blocks, the very first block that we created. It is of type paragraph and inside this, if we keep on expanding, you can see there is another data attribute which has a text and it is showing us the same text content that we just typed so we are going to save the test save method yes that's what we typed let me add another block and i will say our basic demo is working fine i will just clear the console so that it will be easy to navigate the contents i clicked on show button and this time if i'll expand the blocks the number of blocks is two 
can see that again the paragraph element is added and it is in the same order the way we are seeing on the screen so it is saying our basic demo is working fine if i expand the first element it is saying we are going to test the same method it's the same content that we are seeing right now on the screen so congratulations you just learned how to integrate editor.js inside an angular project in the next video i will show you how to add a plugin and then also customize the various options that we have till then take care and build something